this is kind of an interesting little thing I ran across the other day. There's, um, what is holy water? I mean, everybody's heard that term, right? Okay. Well, this is, since we know where it came from, I just decided to look on Catholic Answers and get the Catholic Answer. Okay, why not? And it said, uh, in the earliest Christian times, and that actually means in the earliest Roman times, okay, you got to be careful with that word, it was used for, and they love big words, okay, expiatory and purifactory purposes, in a way analogous to its employment under the Jewish law. I'm like, excuse me? Uh, really? And what's interesting is you go on and you read and they try to simultaneously connect this to two different things and that's when they get in trouble. They first, they try to connect it to a particular water I'm going to show you, but they try to per connect it to mikvah and it's obviously not a mikvah because it's in a little bowl, okay, and they throw it at you or you dip your finger in it, okay. So it is holy water, interesting. And what's interesting about this and what got me on this is there's a popular song out there today. And ugh, I have to admit, I found myself, yeah, it's got a nice tune to it and it sounded good. And I'm just as I'm singing it, I'm going, that's some strange lyrics. You know, <laughs> it's like, this is, let me look at this. And, and, and so most people I find, they think they know what holy water is, but really... Only the Roman church is the only one that's really talked about it. And, and of course, it's immediate descendants. Um, and this is what they say. They say it's water that's been sanctified by a priest or a member of the, of the Catholic priesthood. And so here's this song. It's called Holy Water. And then I thought, it's the song is Holy Water by We the Kingdom. And I thought, that's pretty odd too. But okay, I get past that. <laughs> What's the song? Your Forgiveness. Awesome, I like that. It's sweet like honey on my lips. Yeah, I like that. That's good. I like the sound of symphony in my head. Hallelujah. I, I'm down with that. I like holy water on my skin. Hey, and I'm like, I, I don't know about all that. It's really? Wait a minute. The forgiveness is like holy water. And I'm, I'm like scratching my head. Well, I'll go, okay, well, what does the Bible say? Yeah, I mean, it's got to say something about this, right? I mean, one would think. It turns out I just only can find one reference in the Torah, in the Tanakh, uh, in Braille, and anywhere in the Bible, okay, for holy water. And here it is. It's actually in today's portion, which is why I'm talking about it today. I could have talked about it last week, but it had been in the wrong portion. It says, the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel and the dust from on the floor of the tabernacle, and the priest shall take it and put it into the water. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is the bitter waters test. Hmm... And this is the water that brings the curse. I'm like, oh my goodness. Uh, and I'm looking at, does it really say, does it really say holy water? Mayim Kodesh. It really does say holy water. This is not, the, the bitter waters is not forgiveness. This is not the forgiveness of Yeshua's blood. This is the judgment of God Almighty. Okay? And it's like, I really don't want this, I mean, I don't want this poured on me. I mean, you know, I got to, if, if it was like I'm in jail or prison and they're going to pour it on me, I'd make sure I'm really prayed up good, you know. This is the water that caused 3,000 people to die in their sins at Mount Sinai. Yep. Okay. Um, I, I, and I'm sure that most people don't realize what this song is saying. I really wonder if even the people who sing it know what it's saying. I, I, I seriously doubt it. I think personally it's a perversion to compare the blood of Messiah Yeshua to that water you know, it, it, whatever that is, um, to compare it, you know, to, to any kind of water. It might actually be, and they try to make a, a second argument, that it's the blood that come from the labor, from the bronze labor in the temple service. All right, maybe, maybe, if that's the case. Let's just say that's the case. That allowed the priest to come in, and depending on which labor, there's a, there's a big bronze labor, the bronze sea, and then there's another one apparently that's there near where they're doing the sacrifices to wash their hands. There's more than one. You've got to look at that really close and you'll see it. There's a big one, there's a small one. Maybe it's both of them. Let's just say it is. Let's just give them the benefit of the doubt. What does that allow you to do? As a priest, it allows you to come in, it allows you to wash, so you can do the service of the tabernacle, right? Okay, so that's cool, that's good. Is it fair to compare that to the blood of Messiah? No. Because all that allows you to do is serve. All that allows you to do is keep Torah. All that allows you to do is, you know, be right there. You know, um, Hebrews, 9, uh, Hebrews 10, 
talks about what the blood of Messiah does. Having therefore, brothers, boldness to enter the holiest place, the holies of holies, hagion hagion, into the very presence of the Almighty. Gives me chill bumps. Okay. Holy water, you can come into the temple courts. You can approach, you know, you can work. You can do some slaughtering, okay? You want to, you want to, want to be in the courts? Or do you want to go into the presence of God? It's your choice. You want to be covered by water or be covered by His blood? Amen? Hallelujah. I'll take the blood. You choose. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you.